Hello dear students, uh, welcome to the 9th video lecture for the subject EC304 VLSI. So in this video lecture we will cover the last topic of module 6. Once again of module 6, uh, so in module 6 we have learned uh, the order design. So in part we have already covered part 1 and 2 sessions of module uh, 6. So in that we have covered the static order, carry bypass order, linear carry select order and square root carry select order. So in this video lecture we will cover this final topic or last topic that is the array multiplier or the multiplier design. Uh, multiplier design or the hardware implementation of multiplier. So the module 6 part 3 we will cover the multiplier design the contents that will be covered in this uh, lecture is uh, mainly regarding the array multiplier so when we uh, when we will see the array multiplier uh, configuration we will see that it can uh, it contains two main steps uh, that is partial product generation and partial product accumulation and addition so we will learn these two main steps and its configurations in detail previous case result was 11001110 so 11100111110 okay so from here on ends, we will use this logic to do the multiplication so with that concept moving to the steps involved in the hardware implementation of array multiplier the, we have two steps are involved that is partial product generation and partial product accumulation and addition okay for the first step that is partial product generation so partial to realize a partial product what is required so the first step in multiplication is uh, remember we need to multiply the first bit of the multiplier with the entire multiplicand okay so multiplication so that is what written here this x0 x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 represent the multiplicand bits and y0 represent the first bit of the multiplier so multiplication can be realized using AND gate because multiplication is simply the AND uh, logic function itself so by multiplying the first bit with the entire bits of the multiplicand we will get the first partial product so don't get misunderstood here PP0 represents actually the first bit of partial product 1 PP1 represents the second bit of partial product 1 PP2 represents the third bit of partial product one okay uh, i have written it as pp0 pp1 uh, uh, so it is it should not be uh, confused with this as partial products the first one partial product this as second partial product that is not uh, the logic is uh, oh sorry the concept is not like that here pp0 represents the zeroth bit of first partial product pp1 represents the first bit of partial product so this actually represents the first partial product it's itself similarly all other partial products can be obtained by simply replacing this bit value by replacing y1 we can obtain the second partial product by placing y1 we, uh, sorry y2 we can obtain the third partial product and y3 by placing y3 here we can obtain the fourth partial product okay so after obtaining the partial product what is the next step the second step in the realization of multiplication is actually partial product accumulation and addition so to understand that step we will take another example a simple example with uh, 4 bit uh, multiplication okay so x is actually 4 bit 1010 10, and y is actually another 4 bit with 1011 10 as the value so if you are applying the hardware implementation logic to this to this do this multiplication what is the first step first we need to obtain pp1 so P P1 you can see here P P1 can be obtained by multiplying the first bit of the multiplier with the entire bit of the multiplicand. So we will get first partial product. Second partial product can be obtained by multiplying the second bit with the entire bit of the multiplicand. So we will obtain again obtain 1010. So next step is once you obtain P P1 and P P2 you need to add these two partial products then you will get 0 1 1 1 1. Okay after so this actually represents the first intermediate result this intermediate result has to be added with 
PP3, partial product 3 which is obtained by multiplying the third bit of the multiplier with the entire bit of the multiplicand. So that we will get it as 0, 0, 0, 0. Now add to obtain the next intermediate result. So 0, 1, 1 plus 0, 1, 1 plus 0, 1, 1 plus 0, 1, again 0. So this represents the second intermediate result. This intermediate result has to be added with what? The next partial product which is obtained by multiplying the fourth bit with the entire bit of the multiplicand. So that is actually 1, 0, 1, 0 itself. Then add 0, 1, 1, 1 plus 1, 0, oh sorry, 1 plus 0, 1, 1 plus 1, 0 with a carry 1 and finally 1 okay so this actually represents the 0th bit of the result and this actually represents the 6th bit of the result with the remaining intermediate bits so one point to be noted here is that when we place pp2 pp2 it should be shifted by uh, one bit to the left when we place pp3 we should we should place it by shifting two bits to the left and by uh, to when we place pp4 we need to shift uh, 3 bits to the left. So uh, how to realize the hardware implementation of this logic? That is the uh, concept that we need to learn in this step. So we can uh, naturally think of adders because for addition we need to surely depends upon adders. Now which adder? Half adder or full adder? Okay, That actually depends on the number of bits uh, available at that point. So let's look at the structure. So this is the uh, hardware this structure actually represents the hardware implementation of our 4 by 4 uh, or 4 bit by 4 bit multiplicate multiplication so this and row actually represents what partial product generation uh, realization okay this and row actually real, uh, realize the partial product generation and this half order this you can see HA represents half order and FA represents full order so this adder row we have three adder rows are there uh, so this adder row actually represents the accumulation and addition function so let's see so the first AND gate represents the partial product 1 realization because here Y0 is multiplied with the entire terms of the multiplicand so at this point we will get obtain PP1 and you can see the second AND gate or AND row represents uh, the, the generation of second partial product because here Y1 is multiplied with X0, X1, X2 and X3. And the result of these two rows are actually accumulated in the first order row. So at this point you can see at this point we have two inputs X from, from this AND gate and this AND gate. So we need to use only a half order. But at this point you can see we have one input from the this AND gate, second input from this AND gate and we have a third input that is actually the carry from the previous adder stage. So we here at this point we have three inputs are there. So we need to use a full adder. Again at the next stage also we need to use another full adder because again we are having three inputs, two inputs with one carry input. But at this point we are having only two inputs, one uh, input from the AND gate and second the carry bit. So we can use only, uh, so we need to use only a half order here. Okay, so half order, whether half order or full order, to be, full order to be used that actually depends upon the number of bits available at that point. So this yellow line actually represents the path of carry bit. Okay, so after adding and these two input bits this adder will be having a sum value and also a carry value so that carry value carry value will be passed to the next adder stage that is actually shown using this yellow color so you can see in the second uh, adder row the second adder row actually adds what all values so the output of this first adder uh, row will be the first intermediate result so the first intermediate result will be added with the PP3 value. So PP3 is obtained by multiplying the Y2. That is the third bit of the multiplier with the entire bit of the multiplicand. Okay, X0, X1, X2, X3 will give you PP3. So the first intermediate result plus the PP3 will give you the second intermediate result. So that second main intermediate result is obtained from this adder row. So here you can see only at the first point only two inputs are available so we can use a half a half adder here. But for the remaining points you can see three inputs are there. Here 
for us as in the previous stage we have two AND gate input along with the carry here also two AND gate input along with the carry so we need to say full ladder now look at this point we have an AND gate output or the input from an AND gate along with the carry from the previous adder stage and also we need to consider uh, the carry from the previous adder row so here we have two carry input plus an AND gate input so we need to use a full adder here okay similarly for the last stage also so last stage is actually adding the intermediate result second intermediate result with the pp4 so partial product 4 is obtained by multiplying the third bit of the multiplier with the multiplicand so you can see here okay so it will be added and obtain the final result so the bits contributing to the final result is uh, by the last stage will be from z3 onwards all other uh, the previous bits that is z2 z1 and z0 are actually contributed from the uh, first and gate z0 is actually contributed by the z0 uh, the or first and gate contributes z0 bit uh, the adder the second Z1 is contributed by the first AND gate adder, uh, adder row and Z2 is contributed by the second adder row and finally uh, all of the remaining row bits are uh, contributed by the remaining last adder stage along with the carry is also contributing to an uh, bit in the result okay so one point to be remembered is that only in the first adder row we are having two half adders for the remaining all other ha adder rows only we are using one half adder and that half adder is at the front end itself whereas in the first adder row we are using two half that one is at the front and second is at the back okay so regarding this uh, bit placement if you have uh, you can see here okay pp1 uh, okay this is actually shown here pp1 uh, plus pp2 or you can see here this is actually z0 so z0 is act obtained from the first AND gate okay from the pp1 row itself from the generation of pp1 itself so that uh, z0 is simply taken as such and z1 is obtained from by adding pp1 and pp2 so that from the first half order uh, row it's or from the first order row itself so z1 is taken as such now z2 is obtained from the second order by adding the first intermediate result with the pp3 we will get the second intermediate result so second intermediate result is actually the output of second order row so that is actually first bit of the second order row so that is taken as such and remaining z3 from z3 onwards the output is taken from the last order stage itself okay so that is the uh, key point uh, regarding the uh, second step of multiplication that is partial product and addition hope you have understood next regarding uh, the number of AND gates half orders and full orders required to realize for a general multiplier this can be actually obtained by for an n by n multiplier you can see uh, the where m and m represents the number of bits the number of AND gates required is actually m into n and number of half orders required is n only and the number of full orders required is m minus 2 into n so for our previous example it was a 4 by 4 multiplier so the number of AND gates required is only m into n that is actually 4 into 4 which is equal to 16 number of half orders required is equal to n which is equal to 4 actually number of full orders is equal to m minus 2 into n so it is m minus 2 that is 4 minus 2 2 into 4 that is equal to 8 so this is our 4 by 4 adder hardware implementation so you can verify it here so how many AND gates we require 4 into 4 that is 16 AND gates so you can verify 4 plus 4 8 8 plus 4 so 12 12 plus 4 16 AND gates are used and in case of number of half order is equal to n which is equal to 4 so here you can count 1 2 uh, sorry let me use the laser point okay so 1 2 3 
uh, and 4. 4 half orders are used. And regarding the count of full order, what is the count for full order? Full order is actually n minus 2 into n. So it is 2 into 4 that is equal to 8. So you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. So 16, 1, 16 and gates plus 4 half order plus 8 full order. So that is actually the count. So if a question asked to, is suppose in university exam, suppose a question asked to realize an m by n bit uh, multiplication, then you need to draw a figure like this. And um, we can, before drawing this figure, we can have an idea on the count of the number of half order and full order so you can verify your figure with the number value and you can have an idea okay so before uh, whether your answer is correct or not that you can verify easily final uh, finally we have this one propagation delay offered by an array multiplier so previously in adder design also we have seen uh, when we draw a configuration we will write its propagation delay equation also that is uh, the parameters that uh, influence the delay of that circuit configuration so in the multiplier array multiplier configuration you can see um, m minus 1 plus m minus 2 where m represents the number of bits of the multiplicand so that into t carry carry actually represents the time taken uh, for the travel for the travel of one carry okay from one stage to the from one full order to the next full order so that is actually t carry time taken by the carry bit to travel from one stage to the next stage or from one order to the uh, from one adder stage to the next adder stage and t sum actually represent uh, the time taken by an adder block to obtain the result so n minus 1 into t sum plus t and t and represent the time taken for one and gate to obtain the output okay so this is actually the uh, expression to calculate the propagation delay offered by an array multiplier so with that our uh, sixth module is over so hope you have understood uh, array multiplier Array multiplier is very an important topic uh, you should learn because this is a sure question. From the sixth module, sixth module is actually a small module with uh, a few main topics only. So you need to clearly understood uh, the working of each topic clearly because uh, questions, sure questions are expected from all the topics. Okay, thank you.